I will discuss that in greater detail. Uh, we have Nilesh Shah, Managing Director at Kotak Mahindra Asset Management Company, joining in uh, to take some questions. Nilesh, of course, uh, tweeted out yesterday saying, well, uh, this is great news and other companies should emulate this as well. And Nilesh, good morning. Good to have you here. Uh, it, you know, I looked at the rules uh, which are in effect for central public sector undertakings as well. Is uh, what the Gujarat government has done kind of bringing companies under its ambit to uh, what uh, CPSCs follow right now? So essentially, Prashant, as shareholders, we want to invest in companies which are look at capital efficiently. And a clear policy on dividend distribution is a very, very welcome step. There are few private sector as well as public sector companies which have dividend distribution policy. It gives clarity to shareholders. The step taken by government of Gujarat recommending their PSUs to follow dividend distribution policy is a welcome step as it gives clarity to minority shareholders how the company's cash will be utilized. This is something which is recommended probably for all companies to follow. It brings more clarity, improves governance. Prashant, uh, just as you were talking about the central government policy, I was actually looking at that notification, the 2016 notification, which I found, just for the benefit of our viewers who might be wondering the same. A CPSC needs to pay annual dividend of 30% of PAT or 30% of GOI equity, whichever is higher. Due account should be taken of cash reserves uh, and free, free reserves with the CPSC. Uh, and a special dividend would need to be paid to the central government, uh, of course, in return of its equity investments. And CPSC with large cash reserves and uh, sustainable profit may issue bonus shares. So that's the central government policy. And it seems the Gujarat government has uh, moved pretty much in close alignment to it. Uh, so, uh, Nilesh, hi, good morning, Surabhi. Uh, I think uh, we were discussing this with a couple of experts yesterday. And uh, one interesting anomaly came up. You know, in, in some cases, uh, some of these Gujarat PSUs may meet the net worth criteria uh, or may even, uh, you know, uh, meet some of the other norms that have been laid out, but may not have adequate cash reserves uh, to pay out a dividend. And there was a case, I'm forgetting which company, I think it was the case of uh, GSPL, Gujarat State Petronet, where if you go by FI22 numbers, they'll have to take on debt, borrow to meet this, uh, this dividend criteria. So I'm just wondering if... Uh, uh, if this will be executed smoothly or not, and how investors need to read this? See, essentially, this is a guideline. Each company board will take various factors into consideration while declaring their dividend. We have seen in the past even multinational company borrowing money to declare dividend. Uh, in many cases, borrowing money to declare dividend improves return on equity. But there is no one standard rule which applies to all. I'm sure the board of all these companies will take into account various factors while arriving at the dividend declaration policy. Nilesh, would it have been better uh, for the government to say, uh, well, all of you need to have a dividend, declare, dividend distribution policy? Uh, this is the date by which you need to do it. Uh, and please now uh, formulate your own policies. What's your sense? So this is a step in the right direction. Even private corporates have dividend distribution policies. Obviously, flexibility is built into the same. Uh, at the end of the day, the long-term value creation of a company depends upon capital allocation efficiency. In the past, we have seen derating of many giant companies when they were keeping cash reserves on balance sheet and diluting entire return on equity for the company. When this company started distributing cash, their ROEs went up and so did the valuation. Clearly, if companies have projects in which they can make investments and increase ROE of the business, by all means, they should go for, you know, project investments. But if you are going to deploy money in debt mutual funds, in fixed deposits, in treasury, as a mutual fund manager, I like that. But purely from an equity shareholder point of view, you cannot be diluting return on equity of business by building cash reserves.
that. Uh, at uh, Kotak uh, AMC, uh, Nilesh, I mean, uh, would, would your cha view change? I mean, if you discuss this internally, uh, outlook towards some of these companies, I mean, basically, I'm assuming that you fundamental, fundamentally have to like companies, right? And then on top of it, if there is clarity on how dividend is distributed, that's an added uh, plus. So, uh, what, what's the thought process? Prashant. Yeah, absolutely, Prashant, you hit the nail. At the end of it, it is the business which is whose value is important to determine shareholder value. These are all the features which help in improving governance. And if business is doing well and governance is good, then invariably you get higher valuation. We don't end up buying a stock because this policy has been announced. At the end of the day, this policy helps improve governance, which if business is doing well and market price is trading below the fair value, will result into a buy. But if market price is already above fair value, then you will wait for correction to buy into the stock. Okay. Uh, well, Nilesh, since we have you with us, how can we not ask you, you know, uh, an overall take on the market? Uh, we are going through a pretty interesting earnings season. Uh, the global picture continues to be as muddled as ever. Uh, how do you sort of uh, tie up all the things that are at play uh, in here? Investors are asking the same question. Will it be another flat year? Can I expect uh, something better in the second half of 23? So, Surbi, clearly this is the time where there is contradictory data available. On one side, we have seen banking sector delivering super-duper results and the combined profitability of financial services, which will include PSU banks, private banks, and NBFC, is almost equivalent to what entire Nifty 50 companies earning was few years back. But this trend is not visible across every sector. Normally in the results season, first half, all the good results come out, and in the second half, all the bad results come out. So my feeling is that going forward, the results which will come are more likely to be below the expectations of the market. And more importantly, people are looking towards the future commentary. While overall economy looks reasonably decent, there is worry because of monsoon prediction. There is worry because of the consumption at the bottom end of the pyramid. So my feeling is that this is likely to be a stock picker's market. Broad indices may not move much in any direction, but if you have right stocks in portfolio, you'll be able to generate out performance. Okay, uh, it's stock picker's market, and uh, boy, I mean, uh, <laughs> absolutely the kind of wild moves we are seeing in relation to stocks. Uh, it kind of validates the point you're making. Uh, very large moves and very quick time uh, frames, both up and down as we've seen all through this week. It's always a pleasure having you with us here, Nilesh. Uh, great to speak with you. Thanks very much for your time uh, on CNBC TV. Thank you. 25 points lower. Uh,